Hey, what's happening, everybody? It is Thursday night, night time for another episode of a Thrifty Business. I'm your one host. I'm Jason. How are you? Tonight, I got a special co-host. You've seen her before. You know her, you love her. What's happening, Melissa? How are you? I'm doing good. How are you, Jason? I am dandy because I just sold a CD, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm dandy for many reasons, but I love as the show's going live that I'm like, oh, I just sold a CD. How cool is that? All right. What's happening, everybody out there in YouTube? Good to see everybody. Let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it because we got a lot to talk about tonight. Oh, uh, well, we have a lot to talk about once we turn it off. Let's try that again. Much better. All right. Time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week, I drink a different rum out of a different, out of a different tiki mug, and I try to match up to my guests. My guest tonight. Are the one, the only, Rich and Nyla. How the heck are you guys? Hey. hey. We're right here in rainy Chicago right now. Rainy Chicago. Oh, I'll be there in a couple days. I can't wait for cool weather. Now, I'm glad you said Chicago because it's pretty easy when I have Chicago guests on. So this kick-ass mug is a wall of skulls. And it is from Three Dots and a Dash. All their mugs are very collectible. Uh -huh. Worth a lot of money. Matter of fact, in the thrifting board today, someone found one of their mugs for two dollars in a thrift store, and it'll sell for seventy-five to a hundred bucks. Now, Whoa. I was wondering what kind of rum should I match up, and then Stacy reminded me, duh. So this is called OFTD, and for the purposes of getting it on the shelves, it stands for Old Fine Traditional Dark, but really, it stands for Oh Fuck That's Delicious. <laughs> that's, what it, that's what it really stands for and there's all these players in the tiki world that got put in a room with plantation rums and said create us an overproof rum that doesn't taste like gasoline and one of the guys is paul mcgee and he owns lost lake in chicago really okay which is, cool. which is a tiki bar so there you go i put it all together and this is six uh uh, 69% alcohol, so like one, uh, what is it, 148? <laughs> Whoa! It is so good and smooth. You know, you drink Bacardi 151, you're like, <laughs> this, this is in a league all its own. So if you do enjoy cocktails, if you do enjoy rum, make sure to check this out uh, if you can get it at your local record store. Melissa, what are you uh, having this evening? <laughs> I'm on a diet, so uh, I've got this lovely glass of water out of my Smurf glass. Don't worry, I have the whole collection. Nice. And Rick and Nyla, what are you guys having this evening? Well, we're not too much into the rums, although we're going to try and make it to uh, your Halakahiki on Tuesday. We have margaritas, the pre-mixed Salvatore margarita, 30% alcohol. Did you say margarita? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good. All right. Sit back, relax. We're going to chat with you guys. Oh, there you go. There it is. Nice and handy. <laughs> Enjoy the segments, and we'll see you in a little bit. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. Let's get us back in here, and let's get right to woo, <clears throat> our first real segment here. Do, do, do. Oh, woo-hoo. <laughs> Come on, Tech. There we go. Time for our scores of the week. These are the things that you should be on the lookout for. These are the stuff that Melissa and I sold this week that, ooh, excuse me, made us some good money. So this is a motorcycle jacket, and I paid nine dollars for it at a Goodwill. And I actually sold it for 90. I had it listed for 150, but I did take a best offer at 90, especially considering I paid nine dollars for it. <clears throat> and how, how long did that, was that listed? Um, I would say probably about two to three months. Okay, um, that's fine. Yeah. Um whoa. <laughs> yeah, how was that how's that for fun weirdness? <laughs> Gremlin. Um so I sold this for fifty dollars. Sure, seventy three eighty. I sold this for fifty dollars. This was another Goodwill find. I found it for fifteen dollars, uh -huh. and I actually, I went to Goodwill and I was looking through jackets because I do really well on jackets, and this was in the jacket section, and 
my internet wasn't working and I was like, all right, let me go outside and see what, how much it's worth. And I had a whole series of items. Well, by the time I came back inside, literally all of my items were gone except this vest. And so I grabbed it immediately. Got to love that. <laughs> yes. This one, that one only, that one was only listed for about a week, the vest. Um, so these pants I put as a score because um, I went to one of my local thrift stores on Dollar Pants Day. And you know how a lot of thrift stores have uh, these boutiques now where they're like, oh, well, this is a, a brand new item. So we're going to charge you a bunch of money for it. So they said, pant, all pants, even the boutique. And so I bought 26 pairs of pants for $26. And I've already sold three pairs. I have them all listed and they've only been up for about a week. So this is one of those pairs and average about 20 bucks a piece. Yeah, this is, I was like, God dang, I have to play with the uh, mutes again. I was like, I wonder why she sent this because I'm like, I wouldn't even look twice at Wrangler khakis, but for a dollar, heck yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And it was brand new. So um, these are a definite bolo i find the shape up sneakers everywhere and they all seem to be in really good condition which i feel like means everyone tried them and were like no this is not for me and so i i i buy them every single time and i sell them every single time i did pay ten dollars for this pair i sold it for 50. nice, nice. whoa whoa <laughs> <laughs> uh, a monster. Awesome. Yeah, well, not, not awesome for the people listening. No. Wait, did it stop? Hello, hello, hello. hello. All right, well, we'll try. <laughs> All right, so these aren't the biggest score I've ever had, but uh, J J uh, Joy would be proud. These are old Robux, uh, new with tags. Uh, sold them for forty bucks. I found two pairs the day I found them. But what I thoroughly enjoyed, Melissa, is they were going to Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Of course, cowboy jeans are going to Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. It just it felt, it felt so good. <laughs> uh, picked this up, listed it, sold it with like four hours. Maybe I listed it too low. So Johnny Cupcakes is a brand of T-shirts that you'll know by the cupcake and the, skull, uh, the crossed bones. And uh, when you walk into the Johnny Cupcake store... It actually looks like an actual cupcake store. As you can see, the tag is an oven mitt. And they do a lot of fun things like this leather face eating a cupcake. So uh, pretty bitchin' shirt. Like I said, it sold pretty quick and maybe too quick. But, uh, you know, quick flips are always good. I think I paid seven or eight for it. Sold for That shirt's amazing. Uh, now, this was uh, something that I thrifted for my wife 100 years ago. She was cleaning off her desk. It's a uh, Highline is the company. They call it the weather station. It gives you the temperature, the barometer, and the uh, the dew point or whatever. And I couldn't find a, a stock market one. And the rest were all selling. Uh, they made tons of these uh, with different graphics. They were all selling for about 30 bucks. And so I'm like, all right, what the hell? I'll try 60. And then uh, I knew it was going to be a little bit heavy. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know if it would go overseas. but And, and who, would, who overseas would want the stock market thingy? Well, went to Germany within like six hours. I'm like, oh, well, all right. Full price, off to Europe. I'm like, hmm, maybe I underpriced that too. But, you know, I think I thrifted it for like three bucks. The day I bought this dress, was I was at a Buffalo Exchange in Boston, and the, the girl ringing me out, she was probably like 20 years old. All I bought was dresses that day. She goes, boy, you're buying some <laughs> good dresses. <laughs> I got good taste in dresses. And from that day, I've made a lot of money on the dresses. All right. Before we get to that real quick, I want to do this real quick. Whoop. And let me pop that in there. So right now, the brand new Pacific Northwest PNW eBay and Online Sellers Group is meeting for the first time. And guess what they're watching, Melissa? Us. Hey, guys. Oh, Hey. We're hanging out at Devil's Reef, which is an amazing tiki bar in Tacoma, Washington. So uh, when they said, KJ, can we promote our new meetup group on Thursdays? I go, well, why I got to be Thursdays? He goes, don't worry. We're going to watch it first. I'm like, well, then it should be Thursdays. Hello, everybody. In the <laughs> Good to That's see awesome. you. And I will I will be there soon. We'll, 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 do a, we'll do a fun class. All right. Now it's time for... 
my CD and cassette scores of the week. If you've not started flipping media yet, you are leaving behind so much money every single time you go thrifty. Now, I didn't have any big cassettes this week, but still, I paid uh, 50 cents for this, and I sold for 10 bucks. This is the soundtrack to the uh, Bruce Lee story called Dragon. So that was uh, off and running from Amazon. Now, this one, I haven't a clue most of what the hell it is. I scanned it. It looked good. It is Danny <laughs> Baranowski. Don't know him. Nice to meet you. It's the original soundtrack to Super Meat Boy. I don't know what any of that means. I even tried to research it, and I got to the end of the reading, and I'm like, I, I still don't know what this means. But <laughs> so that's all that matters. <laughs> made some money. <laughs> As long as it sells. So this, uh, I had this James Gang import on Amazon for Evs, and then I moved it to eBay and it sold in like three days for 35 bucks. So apparently, you know, we're going to talk about this a lot tonight. You should not be on one platform for everything. And sometimes you got to take it from one and move it to the other. It sat on Amazon for over a year and it was on eBay for six hours. And that's about it. So <laughs> off and running. And you will see this again <laughs> later in the show. And lastly, anytime you find Disney World, Disneyland, Paris Disney, Tokyo Disney, CDs from the park, especially ones that are older because they have this run and they don't make them, people love to buy them. They, they remember them. They were there at the time. So this wasn't one of the biggest ones, but still, 24 bucks is a nice sale. So if you haven't figured it out yet, I make a lot of money on CDs. Now, funny enough, I'm giving a speech at Ecom Chicago about flipping CDs. And a guy in the thrifting board said, uh, someone asked, should I buy these CDs? And a guy said, do not waste your time. CDs are obsolete. I, I so saw I, that. I showed him my numbers from last December. I sold 188 CDs for $4,200. And he still tried to argue with me. I'm like, okay, good luck. Thanks for leaving them for us. But head over yep. to flippingcds.com just to get the CD webinar. But if you want to go over to this jasonthrifts.com, I got my CD webinar. I got my 36 Mistakes You Must Avoid webinar. I got my Flipping Cassettes webinar. I got my Tiki webinar. All those webinars run two, two and a half hours. They will teach you everything you need to know about that subject to get off and running and making money. However, I don't think it's a good thing. <laughs> Now it's time for our duds of the week. Do not let our mistakes be yours. I'm, I can't wait to hear about yours. So I was like, what and what? Okay. So I didn't pay very much for this, but I shipped it to the buyer and I tested the unit, but I didn't test the remote. So I sold it for $20 and the person I sent it to had to buy a new remote for $15. So... This is a definite dud. Yeah, that remote comes in a little handy. Yep. So, so okay. This is, I'm going to count it as a dud. I still made a little bit of money, but very little. I paid, I think, $9 for these. I do retail arbitrage from time to time, and this was one of those items. Great. I sold it. Great. It went to Canada. Great. I undercharged the shipping. So it was a difference of about, uh, I want to say 10 to $15. So I at least broke even. Def yeah. Oh, yeah. Should uh -huh. I have a new system that I weigh my items immediately upon coming into the home. Hey, that's how, that's how you learn when you, when you have these mistakes. It makes us better because we're like, all right, I'm doing that again. Now, mm -hmm. I put in the duds, and I, I do always share my dud CDs because even at my level of experience, 20 years of selling CDs, I still make mistakes. This isn't really a mistake, but I wanted to show you. It was a bucket savers. It was sealed. There's a ton of them on eBay. So I threw it up for uh, – ended up selling for $10.49 with free shipping. So I made, you know, five, six bucks. Not, not a lot, but to list this CD because it's brand new, you just scan the barcode, tell it your price and the condition, and you're done. So it took me seconds to list it because the picture is already in the database. So I didn't make a ton, but it didn't take me any time to do it. And I put five bucks in my pocket. But this dud, you know, Nick and Nora does usually pretty well, but I have had these adorable footsie 
doggy pajamas up for a year and a half. No nibbles. No nibbles. Oh. So if, oh. if you are a side medium and this uh, this is what you're looking for, I will happily take 20 bucks. Yeah, I was a size medium 20 years ago. <laughs> I was a size medium when I was in third grade. <laughs> and, was, and then that was the end. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's talk about where in the world did our stuff go? If you are not shipping internationally, you are leaving out 7.3 billion with a B potential customers. And I stuff I ship stuff internationally all week, every week. So uh, I I know I just said that that car seat just went to Canada, but I literally sold this hat yesterday. And it went to Port Edwards, Ontario, Canada. And looking at it, it's like almost the U.S. Didn't realize that at first, but it's and that I sold yesterday. Oh, it is. But people pay for the shipping, and I mean, it was a, a twelve dollar hat, and then they paid, you know, like twenty something dollars to make sure it got to them. Nice. nice. All right, so uh, Tiki Mugs, we talk about them all the time. Hey, I'm drinking out of one right now, ta -da. I'll tell you where a lot of Tiki Mug customers are, Australia. They love Tiki Mugs. This one went to Mission Beach in Queenstown, Queensland, Queensland. And uh, I put it up. A friend, had a friend had already said, I want to buy a few mugs off you. Let's talk about this one. I said, all right, let's talk about it in the morning. I didn't take it down. It sold overnight to Australia. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. But this sold for 100 and some bucks going to Australia. And I always get a lot of uh, thank yous from my Australian customers because, A, I don't uh, charge too much. I charge enough that I actually make money off the shipping, but not too much. And the fact that I'll do it. They're thirsty for tiki mugs, and most people won't ship them to them. So that's why we, Melissa and I, both ship internationally. Ta-da. Absolutely. Time for close encounters of the thrifty kind, kind, kind. All right, Melissa's had no close encounters apparently, but I've had two quick ones. And funny <laughs> enough, they both revolve around CDs. So I thought that was kind of apropos since I'm always teaching about CDs. So my first one, if you recall, I sold this James Gang CD. Now, Melissa, you're kind of young. Do you have any clue who the James Gang is? I actually don't. Okay, so the guitar player and the lead singer, same person, is Joe Walsh, who is the guitar player. in the I know who that is. All right. So the reason that this is a thrifty encounter is my teenage assistant who does pictures for me, my neighbor, she just got to work, was telling me all about how her night went. And her night was, this was the third night in a week that she sang back up for the Eagles, for the actual Eagles in Vegas. And as she's telling me, this soul. So here she is with her seven classmates getting ready to get on stage and sing behind the Eagles. What? That's amazing. Yeah. I'm assuming you can pick out which one she is. I put a nice arrow over her head. <laughs> but it was so funny. I'm like, hey, Rockstar, how was your night? And she goes, oh, it was great. We got to meet Timothy B. Schmidt last night. And then and then the Joe Walsh CD sold. I'm like, well, that's weird. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so she uh, she's a rock star. She goes to the high school. It's kind of like the fame high school. And they needed eight, uh, eight singers to sing back up. So. So that's my one thrifty encounter. And this is the best sign I have ever seen at a garage sale in my life. <laughs> this is your chance to own a copy of the worst singer in the history of music, $1 Macy Gray. <laughs> now, oh I didn't God. buy it because I already own the CD, but I was like, man, who took the time to write that? <laughs> no. Oh, my God. That just cracked me up way too hard. So th those oh. are my little thrifty encounters this week. All right, now it's time for... <laughs> you have got to be shipping me little tips and tricks, what to do and what not to do when it comes to shipping. Oh, my tip is use pirate ship. I know it's gone over all the time on here, but... I, I, I even have a friend locally who's a reseller and he will not use pirate ship. And I cannot tell you the amount of money that is saved by using pirate ship, not only with eBay, but if you sell on Mercari, Mercari shipping is kind of expensive. So I offer free shipping on Mercari and I ship everything through pirate ship for them because I mean, the amount of money you save is just mind blowing. 
Sorry. I just had a heart attack. I'll get that chair in a minute. You see? All right. I didn't think you saw because you would have said something. Okay. So uh, I should have done this first. Remember this cool little weather station I sold? All right. So I don't have the best picture, but right here, there's a knob of the middle one that sticks up so you can adjust it. And so I was looking at that knob and I'm like, man, I don't want that knob to get broke. Plus it's going all the way to Germany. And we've always talked about pool noodles and I found a new use for pool noodles. So you cut them in half like we normally do, but you put it over the knob. <laughs> that way there's this channel and nothing's touching the knob. And so I did one across the top. So it'd be the same height. Use the painter's tape because it comes off so nice and easy. And boom, it's off and running. And that way the knob will not get damaged. So if you've not picked up your pool noodles yet, pick them up. And if you need some, I live in Florida. We have pool noodles 24-7 all year round. Yeah, ours are still, I can still find a good amount here in uh, in Vegas. All right, so real quick, in regards to shipping, I get tiki mugs in the mail almost every day. And I do quick little tiki mug unboxing videos. They're about three minutes long. But it's a good education and always seeing how other people ship stuff. Some show up amazing, and some show up uh, wrapped with uh, garbage. So I've had to go through that. And my next one I'm putting up, one of the artists who made the mug shipped it himself. I said, are you ballsy enough to come on and do the show with me? So he's there live watching me open his, his work. So we'll see how he did. So stay tuned for that. And that's right here on this channel. All right, now it's time for... Our thrifty tips of the week, little tips and tricks to help you out when you're sourcing. Okay, so I just told you the story of how I left the store and I put everything on a rack. And when I came back, it literally was all gone. And it was definitely another reseller. I then followed him around the store looking at all my items in his cart that he took. And I was so sad. If you see something you like and you need to research it, grab it. I mean, I've been the other person too. Like I have, you know, I remember I was at a yard sale once and there was a VCR for $2 and a guy stepped aside to go research it. And I said, how much is that? $2, I'll take it. If you don't hold onto it, somebody else will grab it. You are definitely not the only reseller out there and they're in the same place as you are. So grab your stuff, put it in the cart, figure it out. This face follows people around just waiting for them to put it down. <laughs> That's why I followed him with the cart. I was waiting for him to maybe change his mind, but there was no way. <clears throat> All right. So this next one is, I we couldn't, at first we couldn't decide, is this a thrifty encounter or a tip? So we decided to do it as a tip tonight. It's a thrifting tip. If you have someone that you can go thrifting with, and I do right there, there's Stacy, uh, you know, Divide and conquer, but you can divide and conquer a section. So you can still, if you if you like hanging out with a person, you can do both sides of the gene aisle at the same time. And here's what's absolutely effing crazy. This is also a thrifty encounter. I pulled out a pair of rock revival jeans, which we don't know are great jeans to flip at the exact same time that Stacy did on the other side. <laughs> so she said rock revival. And I thought she saw the ones I pulled out. I turned around. She was holding a pair. So this is us taking pictures of each other. God, I wish every place put their pants like that. Stacy didn't like it at first, and I don't think I did either, but I like it better this way now. When we go to stores that don't do it like that, I hate them now. Hate them. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I hate? When you go into the, the thrift store and you go through, through the clothes, when they've put so many clothes on the rack that you can't even move them, I'm like, Ugh. How'd that go? Ugh. I get mad. <laughs> All right, now it's time for our online selling tips of the week. Doesn't have to be eBay, can be Etsy, can be Ruby Lane, ThreadUp, Macari, Depop, no matter what. Here's some little tips and tricks to help you out. Oh, speaking of the best. <laughs> <laughs> That's my tip. Use other places to sell. There are so many places that you can sell. Currently, I'm really trying to work on Facebook. I will admit that I am not very good at it. I'm not a very good social media person, unfortunately. It is definitely something I'm working on. But as soon as we were done talking earlier, I sold something on Together today because I'm on Together. So if you're not 
on together or bonanza get on them because it's it's so easy to set up it automatically deletes it off your ebay it's no extra work for you it's just another way to get eyes on your items so just try one you know and start to get better at it and better at it I want to expect to fail and then learn from it because that's just how yep. it works that's just if how you works. don't fail you will not learn so today I'm sitting here talking to Stacy, and I said, you know what? I don't have my online selling tip tonight. And then <laughs> divine intervention, someone found a wood carved lamp at a thrift store today in the thrifty board and said, is the tiki? I said, no, it's, na it's a native American Indian. <clears throat> and someone then suggested they should put tiki in their title because that's how people will find it. And I said, no, Polynesia and North America are not anywhere near each other. And an American Indian and a tiki, they're not the same. And they don't want to be the same. And they kept arguing with me that, yeah, but here's the problem. When you put in keywords that don't pertain, it gets a bad uh, search result for the customer. And that drives customers away. And so here's like two examples. This is a Kahlua bottle that uh, I think is either Aztec or Mayan, like they put in there, but they also threw in Tiki. This ain't Tiki. Tiki is not in Central or South America. Tiki is in the Polynesia, which is in the middle of the Pacific. So that is not Tiki, nor is this. This is the Hopi Indians in Arizona. They know they got in Arizona. There ain't, it's not Tiki. It's Hopi Indians. So make sure you're not putting in keywords that give bad results because if I'm looking for a blue tiki mug and this shows up, I am pissed because it's clogging my surge and I'm never going to buy this. I am not looking for this. I'm looking for an actual tiki mug. So when the person kept saying, put tiki in this American Indian lamp title, no, no one looking for a tiki lamp is going to buy an American Indian lamp. Now, someone who's looking for American Indian stuff would absolutely buy it. It was a really cool lamp, but not tiki people. So don't keyword spam, please, please. All right, now it's time for... <laughs> Joy's, oh boy, I always screw that up. Jeans with Joy's, good job, award. Yay, good job. Yeah, maybe I should change it. Joy with Jeans. <laughs> so each week, uh, Joy, who is our resident jean expert, scours the thrifting board. And who did a good job? Well, this week goes to, come on, there we go. The person that sold these pretty slick Levi's jeans for 65 bucks. But here's why Candace was the good job of the award a week. It's her first eBay sale ever. Yay! So she checked with Joy to make sure everything was up and up and legit. Yep. And so she got them up on eBay and sold them, I think, rather quick. Paid five bucks, sold them for $65. So awesome. All right. So real quick before we get Rich and Nyla in here, uh, I know it says this week. This will be the graphic for next week. No show next week because I next Thursday I'll be speaking at Ecom Chicago. And uh, then we will return the following Thursday. So that's going to be episode one of season eight. This is the grand finale of season seven, episode 25. And Cassie Moore is on. And, and I didn't realize this until we started talking today. Cassie was on one year ago, like today. And in that year, uh, I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the, the, uh, what, what we're going to talk about next week, a little bit. She's lost 100 pounds on her own, no pills, no surgery. And so we're going to talk about being a thrifter, taken off all that weight, how's it helped her in her business and now thrifting and all that stuff and just see where she is. So uh, that's going to be a good show. So tune in two weeks from tonight. All right. But tonight we are talking about the this young, lovely couple. This I, I, I've never seen such awesome young love before. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's Rich and Nyla. How are you guys? What's happening? Oh, uh, we're doing good. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, this lovely couple. Yeah, you should have heard us earlier. <laughs> Stressful. We're getting ready for ecom. Stressful. I can imagine. Now, we have chatted with Rich and Nyla since four thirty, and all suddenly they froze. We can hear you guys, but uh, you are froze. So, <laughs> oh, that's about right. Yeah, Rich, why don't you leave and come back, please? And we'll start talking about e-com. Okay, let me try and do that. Yeah, so just close out the window <laughs> and then click the link again. I mean, can you believe it, Melissa? We've been talking. We talked to them at 4.30, and then boom. Hey, we're live. <laughs> I'm surprised it didn't happen with mine. I know. But so e-com hey. Chicago starts next week. 
And uh, one of the things that I forgot to bring up, I'm going to bring it up right now, is every year at Ecom, I do a Tiki Bar Hangout for a couple of reasons. Um, I love hanging out at Tiki Bars is the first one. But secondly, Chicago is just rich in awesome Tiki Bars. And so we try and hit different ones at different times. And there's one that's really close to uh, where the event is. And that's where we're going this year. Sometimes we've taken a bus to the further ones. This one's not too far. And so we are heading down on Tuesday to uh, Halakahiki. It, it's one of those old ones that's been there for 50 years. And they look good. Their drinks were less than good for a long time. But they're way better now. So if you're coming to Ecom Chicago and you want to hang out uh, and, you know, we have fun, we talk shop, we don't talk shop, you know, we do a bunch of stuff. Let us know and we'll get you uh, all squared away for the Tiki Bar Hangout, which Rich and Isla said they were going to come and dance on the bar. So that's cool. <laughs> oh, oh, are we live now? Are we okay? Oh, yeah, you're okay. Yeah. Right, okay. We, we were just promising you guys are going to dance on the bar the Tiki Bar. With clothes or without? Well, it depends how many cocktails you have, doesn't it now? <laughs> We've got an early morning on Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, we wanted to talk to you guys about a few things tonight. So let's first start with you're a young married couple and you're working together. How's that going? <laughs> Go ahead. It, most of the time it goes really well. There are times when... I need to send him to the garage and I stay in my shop, in my <laughs> area. Yeah, we need our separation. But, but you know what? For the most part, it goes good. <laughs> you can <you, me. laughs> Well, I, Melissa, that shows how long they've been married. And, and, and Rich knows, because when I ask that question, he goes, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, is yep. a, that is a smart married man. Go ahead, honey. <laughs> <laughs> it's... Uh, it does have its challenges, but we've been we've been doing home based business for twenty four years, I believe, Probably. something like that. It might so be longer. Uh, might even be longer. I don't know. So um, you know, everybody's got their jobs to do, and uh, she does most of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Another smart move. She does most of them. Now, Melissa. Uh, your wife does not work with you. She has a, a career outside the house. Uh, does she spend any time, though, helping you out? Um, I call her technical support. Um, she helps when I don't know something on the computer. Like, the last time I was on the show, she made all the graphics for the, sh for the show. So this time I attempted to make them, and I had to call her three times at her job, you know, asking <laughs> questions about what I should do. Um, but she doesn't, she likes going, she likes getting presents and she likes the shopping, but, uh, no, she does not participate in the actual selling or the actual eBay, but she is extremely supportive. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's great when you, you know, they don't participate. You know, we had a, we had a member of the thrifting board this week, lose her, her young husband unexpectedly. and. Oh. And he gave up his man cave to build uh, her a place for her inventory and her shipping table. I, I, when I read that, I was like, holy shit, what an amazing uh, spouse. And uh, it, it sucked, obviously, that, that, they, that she lost him. But her and I have talked a lot this week. And she's like, uh, she goes, yeah, I'm just, I'm cruising on. Like, I got f uh, five kids, six kids. Like, I can't, I can't just wallow in self-pity. I got to keep on working. So, wow. And so, all right, so that brings me to this question. So uh, how sick do you have to be that the other one lets you be go be sick, Rich and Nyla? <laughs> Get up and work. Well, I, I, I'll be honest with you. Back in January, January 24th, I had uh, knee replacement surgery, and she ran the show for a long time. I, I was uh, – I, I, I wished I could have helped a lot more. I didn't think uh, – it was going to be as bad as it was. I thought I'd be up on my feet really quick, and unfortunately, it didn't happen. So uh, she ran the show for quite some time. Now, that's our slower months through the winter because we sell a lot of products that are used on boats and cars and vehicles and stuff. So, uh, but, yeah, she ran the show. So, uh, but when she gets sick, um, that's not allowed. 
<laughs> Melissa, I, don't laugh. I forgot to tell you, I'm going to take a two week vacation without you. <laughs> so, so, from your injured sick bed when you had your knee surgery, are you like, hey, honey, you're doing that wrong? Or you just, you just be shh, quiet and let her do it? I tell you, I was in so much pain. It was just, it was awful. So, I just, I didn't even care about the business. I honestly didn't. I couldn't, I couldn't. I don't know. You know, some people make it through pretty quick, but this was a, a little bit rougher, I think, than, than, than I wasn't babying it. I wanted to get back, but um, no, I wasn't really worried about what she had to do, and it didn't really matter. So, now, what's I, have a, go ahead. I have a question. Did you guys always start together? Like, did you always do it together? Most, most of the time. We, well, let's see, when our kids were, um, it actually, like in grade school, we started doing, um, we had a window washing business and we worked together on that. And it was, I never knew I, you know, that wasn't my dream job. And here we are using these big poles to wash windows <laughs> and, and squeegee, but it was something to make a living. And, and you know, so we, we did that then, <clears throat> We did some other things and then we finally decided that, well, we started our sign shop and then we got into the selling the signs on eBay and then expanded from there. So for the majority of our married life, I think we've worked together. There you go. That's I have cool. worked with my wife at a job, but I have never worked with her in a business and I really would like to, I really would like to bring her in, but, uh, she just doesn't like the selling. A lot of people say they don't understand how we could work together. And we I always say there's times when you, we don't understand either. <laughs> and we do it. <laughs> so it works. So Rich, tell me about this picture. Whoops, let me get us all up here. Whoops, 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 whoops. whoops. Yeah, so uh, we take a family vacation every year. It just happens to be the same time that they have the uh, the eBay open. So, but we do that every year with family. And this year we had a um, we had our family reunion up in uh, in near the Dells of Wisconsin. Nobody may know about it, but the Dells is a pretty popular area. But we were kind of on the outskirts in Baraboo, and right near there is Devil's Lake. So we were walking Devil's Lake uh, that day. It's a uh, pretty big. Um, big state park in Wisconsin and they have some pretty rough trails in there. And uh, after I had my surgery in January, I said, I want to do some biking and hiking. So that day we did what we, we ended up doing like 12 miles or 11 or 12 miles walking. So uh, up in the hiking area. And so we were coming back from there and I, I had run out of water, so I couldn't wait to get back to the, <laughs> to the, uh, to the lake. And energy. Yeah. <laughs> But that was a fun, fun trip. And I, and I hate to break the news to you, but you guys are froze again. Oh, wait. They're there. I don't know what the heck's going on. So weird. So I have very good internet here, I can tell you. I know. So weird. All right. So you work together. and We do, we do have a lot of members in the group who, who do or have worked with their significant other. But the other thing I want to talk to you guys about is you, know, you mentioned to me, just kind of off the cuff. You're like, oh, yeah, just started selling on Etsy a week or two ago and already got some sales. And so that's what Melissa wanted to impress upon everyone and, and me too is I see so many people in all these Facebook groups, not the thrifting board because we would never allow nuttiness like this, but eBay's dead. It sucks. Amazon's awful. I'm like, you know, take all that energy and go work on a new platform or, or fine tune it because that graphic I showed, it shows like 20 platforms to sell on. Like I can't imagine anyone's on all 20. So instead of wasting time complaining, Go learn a new one. So what brought you guys to selling on Etsy? Well, I, I it's been a little bit longer than a couple of weeks. I got to be honest with you. We started probably back in the spring, I want to say. But uh, the sales actually in the last few weeks have been better than what we've had on eBay. And part of the reason that some because things were slow on eBay, we decided to try, right. you know, try using Etsy, another platform. Uh, we also have a Shopify store. We also uh, sell on Amazon. But um, being in the customs area, everything we sell is custom. It makes it a lot difficult to get information from people when they buy something from you. So on eBay, 
Yeah, on eBay. So with with Etsy, um, they literally before they can check out, you have a field that you fill out that says what information do you need from your buyer, and they can. It, it seems as though they cannot check out without giving that information. So we have no problem getting the information that we need, like a color, what font type they want, what what other other items that they need to give us for the item. So and we only have like thirty five items listed on Etsy. And, we just just before the show we sold two things on Etsy and we've got I think just like one on on eBay for for the night so right and eBay you know I we've done eBay for a long time we love it however just like you're saying you we can't put all of our eggs in one basket and eBay isn't the only choice we have anymore um, and and we've Ask them many times, you know, as far as the custom. Hopefully, in time, they will understand what we're talking about because we're not the only ones on eBay selling custom product. There, it shouldn't be that difficult to put in a way of that. It has the information has to be given before they check out. It's not that difficult. I don't think. I don't plan it, but that that's what we would like. So that's why Etsy works so well for us. But that's that's awesome. See, Melissa, they went someplace else to try and figure out a better resolve instead of just whining. Not that, they, not that these two would whine, but it's so crazy the amount of energy wasted every day. Well, not only that, like if you try another site or another platform, Every, you know, everyone has, I'm going to say a specialty where they, you know, what they sell primarily. Right. Some work better on other platforms and you won't know that until you go try another platform. So right. you might find, hello, kitty cat. You might find one that works better for you with what you primarily sell. You got to keep trying different things. It's just yeah. like uh, we've been doing t-shirts now and we're, we're we put them on merch and now i can put them on um etsy with printify and so that's an area that i'm just beginning to explore and so um and a lot of that has come from meeting different people through ecom or through um through you jason through different you know boards that we're involved in that we find out about these different possibilities which can grow our business. And then I think that they're almost free. <laughs> you know, they're almost free. I mean, merch to get on, we're on merch by Amazon. It's like, where can you get uh, a platform where you can almost do something for nearly zero other than time? Right. And and that leads us into our, our third part of why you're here. And this is such it's like we planned this, which we did. <laughs> <laughs> How would a person go about learning about all these new platforms in a way? Oh, I, I don't know. Maybe Ecom Chicago. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe that'd be <laughs> Yay. So Ecom Chicago is coming up next week. Uh, here, yeah. I got a graphic. Hold on. October 16th through 18th. Uh, it's an amazing event. Uh, I was so happy that uh, the first year that Rich and Isla asked me to speak, uh, and then I spoke because the event is awesome. It's way more uh, personal because it's not as big as, say, like eBay Open or Posh Fest, and so you get you get the a little more. You can talk to every person that's on stage, every coach, and and that's man. The thing I loved last year the most was the coaches' day, and I I thought I would like it, but I didn't realize I would absolutely love it, uh, and I didn't coach long enough. I only coached five hours this year. I want to go eight. So how the coaches' day come about? Oh, that was uh, that was started with uh, Mark. He had uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the original speakers that was there. Might have been Barbara Bosch, and I'm, I think uh, she said, "You know, you ought to do something like that before, or whatever." Uh, the same day that we run the vendor day, and um, it, it was definitely one of the speakers. And, and uh, we threw that out there last year, thinking, you know, who we're going to get to show up for this or whatever, and it really. It was amazing, and this year I think we have how many? Uh, we have uh, twenty coaches on. Um, yeah, yeah 20, twenty coaches, twenty tables, and that room. It's, so it's going to be, be it's, it's going to be interesting to get everybody together and try and get everybody organized with with the sign up times and things like that. But uh, 
it's been great and um, I appreciate everybody that's doing it and and I'm hoping that everybody that like you that that goes out and does and takes the time yeah, uh, we get something out so of it. hopefully you can you can get something out of it as well yeah uh, I'm coaching obviously I think Flavio's in the chat uh, he's coaching and what I'm doing because every coach is doing something different so it's a pretty cool thing so like we're talking about Melissa saying to maybe you haven't found the platform that you need so every coach has a different thing I'm I'm absolutely talking about eBay eBay uh, someone's talking about merch someone's talking about Shopify so you get these 15 minute one-on-one -on -one segments with us and what I'll do is I'll look at your eBay store and I'm pretty good at saying all right you need to here's how you need to fix some pictures and some titles and you know you need some better terms of service, uh, and it's great. I, I, already, I already told the people in the thrifty board if you sign up, and all my slots won't fill for the whole eight hours. You want to stay a little bit longer? I'm happy to uh, work with you a little bit more. So uh, it's going to be an amazing day. It was so fun. I had so much fun as a, from the coaching end last year. I was like, oh my god, this was like the best thing. I, I just didn't. It was so weird, and, and the, us coaches because you guys forgot to schedule us a lunch. <laughs> So yeah, we're, we've got it in there this year. We got it, yeah. So I was going to say, you didn't even. <laughs> and everybody that's coming, uh, one of the sponsors from uh, the uh, Towers from uh, the uh, not coaches from the other pre-show vendor, pre -show vendor day. day is sponsoring lunch. And last year it was like supposed to be only for pre-show vendor day. So now he's buying pizzas for everybody. So anybody that's going to be there. You know, within a certain we'll time, pizzas. but still, yeah. you know, and it'll be. So we're going to have pizzas there for that as well. And then after the event that night, we have the uh, meet and greet next door at the bar, at the um, the sports bar. So uh, that's another great time to interact with all of the speakers and the sponsors and people. And, and that's always been a great event as well. Yeah. So, Melissa, have you been to any events like this? No. No, not for reselling. I actually haven't. Uh, not because of not of a want to, but I just each time, you know, getting the time to get there and the money, I have not yet. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things too is, you know, so so the the pre the the first day is the vendors in one room demonstrating their products, and then the the coaches, me and the coach in the other room, and then right. two days of uh, amazing speeches. But where all these events really pay off. Uh, you know, I always say invest in your business, invest in yourself, the money spent and, and what you're going to get out of it. It's so minuscule to what you're going to get out of it. But it's the people that you meet at the Tiki Bar on Tuesday, at the sports bar on Wednesday, in the hallway. I have seen so many, uh, and I, uh, some of it's been me too, people get together, start working on business plans and doing this, doing that. Hey, I never met you before. And now we're doing business together. It is awesome. So it's not just about what you learn, which is always very great, but it's also about who you meet and where it can take you. And so that part of it's really invaluable. You can kind of plan for it, but you never know who you're going to bump into, who you're going to sit next to at lunch. You know, it's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, my folks usually attend, they can't attend this time, but they attend and then they see all these great speakers and they're like, and we want to make shirts and we want to get a Shopify store and we want to do all this. And I'm like, whoa, 80 year olds, slow the brakes a little bit here. I can only handle I mean, you on like one platform at a time. <laughs> I went to your event in Miami, uh, if you count that, but that was invaluable. And that's, you know, a smaller scale event than one of these bigger ones. Yeah, so you got to come out and meet us all time. All right, so uh, we had a contest today in the thrifting board to give away two tickets to Ecom. Shall we give? Uh, shall we pick some winners? Come here. Heck yeah, I didn't even see that. So, what? I can't win. Melissa, which one of your children are you yelling at right now? She, the dog is crying. She wants up on the couch. She's I little. Turn, I I turn, turn, pick her up. Next thing going, and all I heard was "Come here," and I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember who said it. <laughs> <laughs> she's literally she's standing and looking at me crying, going, mm. like having a baby. Oh, I know. Look, I, I I go for a walk every morning now, and I try to take her with me. I sent a picture to Jason how well she walks. I carry her. I carry her on a 30-minute walk. <laughs> all right. So all of you all in the thrifting board have finally paid attention because 
I do sneaky little things like that. So I said I have two tickets to give away Decom Chicago. And the question is, take the number of the Beatles, that would be four, times the members of ZZ Top, that's three, four times three is 12, and my said Jackson five, which would be seven, and give me your answer. <laughs> so then I keep saying, by the way, that wasn't the real question. The real question is, what's two plus two? Because no one ever reads the whole thing. Well, you guys all read it. Only one person said the, said the wrong answer. So you guys are pretty good. So everyone got assigned a number. So as you can see here, the, uh, Adrian is six. Christopher is 25. And this went all the way to 52. So I have a random number generator here, 152. So we're going to draw two tickets. Now, I hope the 52 of you can actually go <laughs> and attend. If you can't, please let me know right away, and I will get another uh, winner in place. But here we go. Da -da -da. 49 is our first winner. And that would be. Oh. How do you figure that stuff out? Yeah. That, Paul, Paul there, is yeah. First you can go. All right. I don't know if Paul's <laughs> in the chat right now, but Paul, would you write that down or message me? Uh, <laughs> I forget. So Paul's our first winner. And Paul yeah, Paul Joseph. And our second winner is number 52. Wow, that was crazy. And that was Summer. Okay. Summer Rogers. Mm. Oh, I think I got it. <laughs> wow, that's what you mean. So, Summer, you won also. Now, the rest of you, uh, thank you for participating. Sorry you didn't win, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't come because, like I said, you've got to sometimes invest in your business. And one way to do that is, you know, sometimes you got to buy better equipment at your house. I can't believe how many people don't have a scale. Oh, it drives me nuts. Uh, but sometimes that means going to an event like Ecom Chicago where you can meet all the speakers, learn all this amazing stuff. Oh, let me tell you what I'm doing, because I'm doing some fun stuff. I'm giving away prizes, so you better be ready. I speak after lunch on Thursday. I'm doing two things. I am teaching about flipping media, CDs, and cassettes. I'm going to draw two lucky winners to come up and shop, and I'm going to have two what they call 30-count boxes of CDs. In both boxes oh. are, the, are the exact same worth of CDs. They're going to get 120 seconds, two minutes, to pick out the five best CDs. So what I've done is I have a list, which each CD is worth. Joy and Angela, my admins, are going to help me. So the person who adds up to the most money, kind of like Price is Right, is going to win a prize. So we're going to do some live shopping on stage. Then right after that, I'm giving a little bit of a quiz to the whole audience. I'm going to show you 25 classic records that have all sold millions of copies and I've removed the artist and the title. So how well do you know classic records? So again, those who have the two best scores will win a prize. I got gift, uh, gift cards to like Amazon and Panera and stuff like that. So I'm giving away those. And then the rest of my time, I will be teaching everybody about how to find it, how to make money out of it. Uh, but I'm giving away stuff. So I like to give away stuff. Like Rich and I like to give away stuff. Yeah, we've got, yeah, we're going to have some prizes there too. We also have, um, as you know, we do a lot for uh, the veterans. Uh, we we have actually we sold out the first ten freebies for veterans. Vettix.org. There should be some more on there, but um, we added another ten with them. We also have uh, the, we always do a charity every year. So this is the American Cancer Society, and we have very good friends that are involved they're, with that. They're going to do it. They're going to do a split the pot. The pot. So when you get when you get there on Thursday or whatever, you buy tickets and we're gonna have a drawing for that on Friday. Then we have another program where you go around and go to see each of the vendors or sponsors that are in the room. Mm -hmm. You turn in that book. We have a hundred dollar winner for that, a gift card. First and, prize. and first prize and the second and third for fifty dollars for that, that you'll be able to win at the event as well. And then along with the prizes that are given away by all of our sponsors and so on throughout the Oh the event. yeah, we got a lot of swag. Oh, we got. Yeah. Oh, we got so I, much. I wish I could turn this camera over here and I show oh, you what my living room looks like. It's the living sad. room and the bedroom. Not our bedroom, but another bedroom we've got filled. So there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot of good a, stuff. A lot of work involved here. <laughs> but look at that. You could attend, and if you happen to get picked to do shopping on stage, and my, and you could get this other, you could win half the pot. Like you could leave in. In the positive, like you could pay for the event and be like, I want cash and I want prizes and I got swag. I'm like, I want more than I spent. So you got to come. If you're in the Chicago area, you got to come. It's an amazing event thrown by amazing people. 
Uh, Mark and Robin are the other two that are part of the team that throw the event. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where I never thought in a million years I would spend a couple of days every year vacationing in Elk Grove Village, but I do because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and Mark and Robin, uh, of course, those are our co-organizers. Mark does an amazing job. And I finally got them to be able to speak this year. So you're going to learn a lot about shipping. I'm going to tell you what, shipping and shipping supplies and everything. They know it. They, they are absolutely incredible people to listen to. And so, um, and the other, a lot of people ask, why don't you videotape this? I can tell you why. <laughs> it's pretty simple. A lot of people don't want to be on video. You have a lot of things that you have to sign off on. And the price that we charge is very, very reasonable. So I am not interested in making money on selling other tapes and things about what happened there. The best way you can do it is just show up yeah, and, yeah. and do it that way. Yeah. We were going to tape one year and it just turned into too many we're not, hassles. We're not experts either. <laughs> you know, we're, we're just regular people who are learning all of this as we go along. So, you know, I don't yeah, I, uh, I, I'm one of those. I, I don't want to be on camera. Yeah. I, and <laughs> and that, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> maybe you wouldn't mind doing that, but there's many of the speakers that are out may there not. that don't want to or don't necessarily want to give away their information. That they're that they're talking about and i and i understand that because there are some things in e-commerce that if you're gonna you know pay someone or be in a specific group to learn the information if everyone was to learn it i could understand how that would tag something what i do and what i share i don't mind because you know part of thrifting is it's a crapshoot melissa and i go out a couple times a week or every day and we don't know what we're gonna see because we're just out there going through goodwills and savers but I don't mind sharing all my, even on CDs. Look, I've been selling CDs for 20 years online. It was an accidental thing. I got laid off of a job. I was standing in a CD store and I looked at a table of tw uh, a table of dollar CDs and I went, those have to be worth more than a dollar. I, I, I bought 20, which I thought were good, went home and taught myself. And that was almost 20 years ago. So I don't mind sharing because like with CDs, when I walk into a CD store, I don't know what's going to be there. Could be something good, could not be something good. But, you know, the person in North Dakota, he's going to see things I'll never see. <laughs> so he might as well grab them and make some money, too, because I'll never get to North Dakota. Never. It's too cold. I'll never get there. And it doesn't matter how many people do it. Everybody buys different things or, or gravitates toward different things to buy. So, like, my local Goodwill is, is so many resellers, but we all buy different stuff. So it doesn't matter that you share it with everybody. It's just now it gives an equal opportunity mm -hmm. well i learned and, you know when i'm at the event i learn from everyone that rich and nyla have come speak to and, and sometimes i'll be working on stuff and man i hear something i'm like oh, i gotta pay attention now <laughs> yeah i i see i you do i see many times sitting right in the back and there, there's a lot of people and it's amazing the camaraderie that goes out outside in the in the area out, out of uh, around when people are talking to each other and they got an interesting conversation going about whatever they're selling or whatever and they say hey can I, you mind if i sit in here and talk and um it's about the networking we've been chamber members for what 25 years almost our same chamber that i've been in since it almost was inception in elk road and we still go to networking events and we've got a big gala coming up in november that we'll go to it's about the people that you get to know that are going to turn you on to the other people that they know it's it's a matter of people liking each other and doing business with people that they know and 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 respect and that's just the bottom line and it's the same with with e-commerce as we grow we get the same people that come back and buy from us again and again we've got people buying boat names and registration numbers for years and I'm, you know, unfortunately a lot of them still just go to ebay they won't come direct but at any rate it doesn't matter we still get to sale so uh people have to think about that instead of it being a one-time sale to somebody, send them a little thank you, tell them to look at my stuff again, and you'll be surprised how many people will come back and do repeat if you, business with if you. you. give them good service. Service, yeah. Everybody likes to be happy when they get the stuff. Absolutely. All right, so those of you who are still on the fence, but you live nearby, come join us. It's gonna be an amazing event. Uh, head over to ecomchicago.com. You can type in Tiki20 off to save 20 bucks, and I, you will definitely get your money's worth out of this event, especially if you can be there all three days. It even start on Tuesday night. Like I said, we're going to hang out at the Tiki Bar, have a good old time, 
and uh, go on from there. So head over to ecomchicago.com, get signed up, and we will see you in the lovely suburb of Elk Grove Village. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jason, so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for coming on, guys. Good to see you. I can't wait to see you in person. Give you a big old hug in a few days. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in tonight. Uh, thank you all who have watched Thrifty Business. This is the end of season seven uh, with the episode number 25, starting season eight in two weeks. So it's 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 always a pleasure. I love, you know, setting up the show is a lot of work, but once I get live and I'm hanging out with my co-host and my guests and I'm seeing all you guys in the chat, it's just such an awesome, fun hour to hang out with everybody. And it's been many fun hours. So I want to thank everybody. So subscribe down below if you haven't yet. Give us a thumbs up. and. Uh, We'll see you live in two weeks, but those of you in Chicago, I'll see you in a few days. Awesome. Bye, Melissa. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Bye. evening. Bye. Bye.